I gotta catch up on the show Vikings. It's much more interesting than this shit. Tithing? The concept of following us. I'm getting in touch with my feminine side over here, you know? Very good. Someone had to do that for you. Is that Aristotle? Was the one that was like thinking that women are just failed men? See, I think that men are like like hey, stunted babe. stunted women in the like wholeness of their spirit and everything. And so they got a penis to like, you know, kind of balance it out. Uh, someone just, someone just posted gay and evangelical. What can possibly go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> and do we care that we are in a different arrangement on the screen? We have typically been me and Nancy on top and on the bottom. <laughs> and now I can be on top <laughs> to Mary Christ. Oh yeah, at the time of the resurrection and his. At the time of the what? Uh, at the time of his second coming. <laughs> mm hmm. Spermatooza. <laughs> Spermatozoa. I like spermatozoa though. Oh, oh I do too. <laughs> the... Well, <laughs> we're no closer to uh, to penetration here. Welcome to Unpack It, the inappropriate and unruly show where former cult members read the books of their former cult. Tonight, we have myself, I'm Patty, and I'm here with my sister, Nancy. Together, we make up the Apostate Sisters, and joining us is our good friend, Joel, a.k.a. Mr. Difficult of TikTok and YouTube. So glad to see you both. Welcome to our seventh session going through the missing dimension in sex. So where we left off last time was in chapter four, which is a really long chapter. So we've been at this for a little while. And the section is the spiritual embryo. <laughs> this is like a pretty intense buildup, I gotta say. So now, once spiritually begotten, we are merely a spiritual embryo. Now we must be fed and nourished on spiritual food. Jesus said man shall not live by bread, physical food alone, but by every word of God. Spiritual food. This we drink in from the Bible. But we drink in the spiritual knowledge and character also through personal, intimate, continuous contact with God through prayer and through <laughs> Christian fellowship with God's children in his church. What am I missing? What'd you do? I'm sorry. It's just all the being intimate with God that I just like, uh. And I was just going, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's having an orgasm from god i think i mean bride josh. of christ and all you know do you love josh i do sorry intimate contact with god kind of like threw me off and sent my mind in all kinds of weird places <laughs> i know oh, i mean role. i mean me yeah. too <laughs> yeah. now the physical embryo and fetus is fed physically through the mother god's church is called jerusalem above which is the mother of us all. Notice the exact parallel. The church is the spiritual mother of its members. God has set his called and chosen ministers in his church to feed the flock for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body the church of Christ, till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I'm already bored. Holy shit. All right. <clears throat> I like a feeling of, I'm sorry. Oh my God. I was going <laughs> to say, I like a feeling of fullness. Oh no. <laughs> uh. Okay. Patty, you blush easily, my I dear. Know. Oh, it's a this problem. Is, are you feeling spiritually fulfilled right now? <laughs> oh, I'm, yes. It is the duty of Christ's true ministers, and how scarce today are those, to protect the begotten but yet unborn saints from false doctrines, from false ministers. Not my ministers, Armstrong said. No, he's all got the truth. He's got all the true ones. Mm, unless they said something he didn't like and then he hit the shark button. 
Yep. Yeah. Yep. The human mother carries her unborn baby in that part of her body where she can best protect it from physical harm. And that protection is part of her function as well as to nourish the unborn child. Even so, the church, through Christ's ministers, instructs, teaches, counsels with, advises, and protects from spiritual harm the unborn members. What a wonderful picture is the human reproduction of spiritual salvation. Continue further. As the physical fetus must grow physically large enough to be born, so the begotten Christian must grow in grace. <laughs> it's a Christian before it's even born. Cute. Wait, and so does this mean that churches are basically like, like a wooden stone uterus? That's kind of what I'm getting out of this. Like building yeah, that's basically what he's saying. And in the knowledge of Christ must overcome, must develop in spiritual character during this life in order to be born into the kingdom of God. And as the physical fetus gradually one by one develops the physical organs, he needs features and characteristics. Even so, the begotten Christian must gradually, continually develop the and these are in all caps spiritual character love faith patience gentleness temperance he must live by and be a doer of the word of god he must develop the divine character Woo! okay doer of the word of god Ooh, do tell then in god's due time though the man may die meanwhile by a resurrection or by instantaneous change to immortality at Christ's coming, he shall be born of God into the kingdom of God. Because God is that kingdom. He is no longer material flesh from the ground, but composed of spirit, even as God is a spirit. How wonderful is the truth of God. Yet by this dastardly perversion of sex attitudes and purposes and the true sex knowledge of God's word, Satan has deceived the world, has blinded humanity to the fact that God is this kingdom Jesus proclaimed, and that we may be born as spirit individuals, as part of that divine family, as part of that God kingdom. rock a -bye, baby, I'm so bored. How precious pure and wholesome is God's truth. And God designed reproduction to picture his truth in physical matter and to keep us constantly in the knowledge of his wonderful plan of salvation. Because that's in all caps. Let us then <laughs> allow the living savior to clean up our minds and open them to his truth. Well, I don't know about you guys, but uh, someone who has to clean up this mind, that's gonna take a long time. Are you saying you have a dirty mind? Thoughts? That was pretty boring, huh? <laughs> yeah, pretty boring. I, I don't know. My big takeaway was churches are uteri. His concept of being born again is that we are not actually born until the kingdom is fulfilled. So that was uh, in that thing. What was it? What does it mean born again? Or what? Do you, just what do you mean born again? That one of the booklets? Um, he, he addresses it like that, that we are begotten, but that we are not born. And so again, that's theology that is just dead wrong. It just doesn't exist. And, and right. if you're looking at it uh, uh, objectively or subjectively, it just does not exist in the Bible. But then it starts to look like manipulative wordplay on his part. Of course it is. All right. We've graduated to chapter five, everyone. <clears throat> like We're getting closer, history. I can tell. Because this is the divine purposes of sex. I mean, we're going to get to God's sex real soon. Joel, hang in there, buddy. Yeah, I know you're about to explode. The divine purposes of sex. Now comes the big truth. Sex was designed and created in humans for purposes other than reproduction. You heard it here first. Yes. For purposes totally foreign to animal or plant life. Okay. I'm a little more confused now. Let's see where this goes. But the world has continued in unhappy and wretched ignorance of these glorious and God-bestowed purposes. And why? The only authority for morals. 
All right. This brings us again to that striking truth that the word of God is the foundation of all knowledge. God is the supreme educator. The Bible is far, far from the sum total of knowledge. Well, all right. I actually appreciate that little tidbit. It is the basis, the foundation, the starting point, and the foundational approach. Pretty sure that could have been two words. To the acquisition of discoverable knowledge. <clears throat> yes, I do appreciate that he says it's not um, the sum total of knowledge because there are some Christians out there that say, oh no, there, there's an answer for everything literally in the Bible. You can find it. You can find it in there in some form. That is called systematic theology. When you hmm. believe that every answer okay. is found within the text. Yeah. Okay. And I have a big problem with systematic theology. Well, apparently so did Herbie. So you're in good company. Okay. Oh, no, no. <laughs> His was limited. He had a form of systematic theology. He was very, very rigid <laughs> and, and, no i heard and, that was his wife joel <laughs> no that was oh, that was frigid oh oh add an app okay maybe it was cold anyway um <laughs> i mean it was a, up in oregon where it started right so i don't know how cold it gets but um the, the <laughs> so but but seriously speaking though um the wcg was hyper literalist hyper literalist. They did believe that the not all answers were in the text, but they were hyper literalist. So I have a problem with that. So yeah, you were saying in the same camp. Nope, because I don't take the Bible as that literal. Yeah, clearly you don't even think um, the Garden of Eden was a real place, right? I think that's also uh, something that even the writers did not necessarily believe as absolute fact. Just because of the way it's like Genesis 1 to 11 are just like slapped together. It, it's really clear that there were sections and portions that were put together. Since I'm curious, how did the writers of the Bible get that story, Adam and Eve? Did they just pull it out of their ass? Did they get it from some other culture? Yeah, I think it was a, a redefining of Canaanite creation stories. Um, it, it was a redefinition, I think. I think what it was basically saying is like, no, this is the way that God is versus the other Canaanite uh, religions that said that the gods had a war and that humans were slaves. And so here you are, it's like God just speaks and then humans are rulers. So it's like a, it's a redefinition. Okay. God, through the Maker's Instruction Book, reveals what man cannot otherwise learn. I beg Full. to fucking differ. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're good. Sorry. <clears throat> Pretty sure we would have figured it out on our own. <laughs> Full truth comes from the biblical revelation plus acquired and discoverable knowledge approached through the concept revealed in the Bible. Man without divine revelation has been able to observe that plant life reproduces, animal life reproduces, and human life reproduces. From this, ignorant of divine revelation, man has formulated erroneous and happiness-destroying concepts about the purposes and uses of sex. <sighs> Through the centuries, pagan dualism had assumed and taught the erroneous premise that the only purpose of sex is reproduction and has viewed even that purpose with suspicion. Okay, I'm just going to say that erroneous he may really enjoy using because it looks just a lot like erogenous, but you know, you can you can say I'm wrong about that and that I'm the dirty one seeing the word erogenous when it's the word erroneous, but you know, not understanding the real meaning and true purposes of marriage and inheriting its concept from the Babylonian mystery religion, Again. which is the devil, uh, it placed marriage on a lower plane than celibacy of lifelong virginity. <laughs> so he's saying it's not God, it's not Christianity that tried to make celibacy seem like a good thing. That's the dirty, dirty ideas of the Babylonians. So, you know what's okay. funny? Mm. Is that the Bible says exactly the opposite. Well, I'm sure yeah, that Matthew 19 is where it says that it's better off not to marry. 
there, uh, Paul says, if you can, it's much better for you not to marry. The Bible, uh, Jesus Christ is like the first religious figure. I be- I, there's been research on this. I think he was the first that said that that actually espoused the idea that you don't have to get married to have a fulfilling life. And the because like because w- other cultures like in Confucianism the concept is that you marry you have posterity and like your heirs will carry on your name mm. and what uh, Christ did in terms of like is like uh, his teaching said yeah marriage is okay but not getting married can be even better and actually giving validity to um, or uh, v- validating um, people who never did. Today, educators, scientists, psychologists, doctors, and those who set the moral standards. I mean, he's not that wrong, right? Like, because who does set the moral standard? Like, I guess other than church stuff. Right. Right? Like, doctors are telling us how to behave because it's, like, in theory for health reasons and stuff. So, okay. That's kind of an interesting Educators. Educators and scientists, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Psychology. Yeah. contradiction with what he's been talking about too since he's been so against evolution he's been against medicine and doctors and yet he throws this shit here in this book well but he's going to point out why they're erroneous Mm -hmm. can't wait um i knew you were going to do that i knew you were going to do that i was waiting for it (laughs) what happened (laughs) Oh, I said erroneous, and then I went, (laughs) (laughs) erroneous. Okay, educators, scientists, psychologists, doctors, and those who set the moral standards rely on the evolutionary concept as their assumed and erroneous basic premise and approach to knowledge. They do not know the origin or purposes of sex. They do not know how, why, or when marriage originated. The Bible reveals knowledge otherwise unacquirable so once again let us go to that source of knowledge remember the eternal hebrew yahweh who literally spoke and instructed adam and eve was the very person of the godhead who later became jesus christ okay I'm waiting for Joel because i think he's going to burst the seam right you have something to say Ooh, that, that last statement that's something I'm not used to the WCG saying, because what really? we said was that Jesus was the angel of the Lord and potentially was Melchizedek in Genesis. But we never really talked about Jesus being Yahweh himself, which is actually the reason why uh, the Hebrew Roots movement is Unitarian and they are not believing that Jesus himself is of divine origin. Um, uh, Armstrong recently uh, looking into this stuff, it's like, oh, now I see... So the Hebrew Roots movement took an idea of his and actually they became staunch supporters that Jesus is the Messiah, um, but that but that he himself was not like God, God. And and so oh. for him to say that that uh, he was Yahweh, that's a big statement there. Um, and I do agree with it. I actually do. But like it. But I'm surprised he would say it. Right, because he's saying Yahweh is Jesus. The WCG thing was saying the angel of Yahweh was Jesus. And when you look at the, uh, basically the angel of Yahweh, uh, the meaning of angel is messenger. So the messenger of Yahweh, the one that actually speaks, Spoke. very often it's like the, it's the angel of the lord and so in in mainstream christianity the thought is that the angel of the lord is god so it's the same idea but with a slight nuance that the angel of the lord is god but more like his voice like the the representation of who he is in a more human like form and so uh, which would be the concept of jesus as well which is why people think when you read the angel of the lord you think of jesus i mean it's all just Sorry, like I just, died. I just died when you were just like oh and i was like yeah that was just me rambling for two minutes and you had no idea <laughs> well i just don't get where it's going right mm-hmm. like that's fine okay this person thought it was like this spirit means that and whatever and it's like what the f- fuck is the like end result of this all i was saying was that it's very interesting to me that he called jesus yahweh here because i remembered a distinction in the wcg 
So right. that was, yeah, that's, that's all I was saying. Oh yeah. I, I, uh, I fully accept what you're saying and I like, I get it, I guess, but it's, it's more the like next step of that, of like, like why though, you know, like we could debate and say who believed what, but it's like, why have people spent so much time trying to decide if Jesus was the word, if Jesus was the angel of God, if Jesus was fucking Yahweh himself, like what the fuck does it matter? What the fuck does it matter to all the people on the planet getting bread in their fucking tummy as long as they're glu not gluten intolerant, <laughs> right? <laughs> or whatever, have food, have shelter, like. Ugh. Yes, Patty, that Finding is what we Jesus should be worried farther. about. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, ah. sure, it's interesting. And in a world where everyone had all their needs met, like I could get on board with going on a crazy deep dive on that. But like, until right. then, why the fuck? Absolutely. It does not matter in terms of like the here and now, the homelessness situation. I just in Orlando, I just passed by a couple of bridges where you just have entire communities of homeless. And I'm just like, I felt so helpless because it's like, I can't, I can't actually do anything. And, and hopefully Durante stuff will go somewhere, but we'll see. But yeah, he is a very... I, I don't know how to describe him. I, I would just, there's, there's a fight. I think he would appreciate this. There's a fire within him. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Fire. Yep. Yes. Him and his wife. What a dynamic team. Okay. Moving on to the next section. Mm -hmm. The second purpose. Wait, what was the first purpose? Reproduction. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Babies first. All right. Okay. The second purpose. Jesus taught the Pharisees precisely the same thing about sex that he had taught Adam and Eve. To the Pharisees, he said, okay. have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. I feel like I've heard that in all the weddings. So then this is their response to him. So after he said this, they said, then why didn't Moses say in the law that a man could give his wife a written notice of divorce and send her away? They asked. Then he said in the next verse, Jesus replied, Moses permitted divorce only as a concession to your hard hearts, but it was not what God had originally intended. And I tell you this, whoever divorces his wife and marries someone else commits adultery unless his wife has been unfaithful. Jesus' disciples then said to him, if this is the case, it is better not to marry. And then Jesus responds, not everyone can accept this statement, only those whom God helps. Some are born as eunuchs, some have been made eunuchs by others, and some choose not to marry for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Let anyone accept this who can. But There were also, entire tents for people to castrate themselves in the Middle Ages because of that verse. Yeah, you know, it's funny. It's like, that's that's not the point either. The point is, right. it's like, if you can, like, keep control yourself and, and like, don't, don't go off, like, having sex with everything that moves. Why not? <laughs> first of all, because a lot of it was not consensual, um, like, uh, first of all. But if it's consensual, honestly, I have no issue with somebody else doing it. I just don't always, like, like that. that's just, like, it just goes based on conviction. But what Jesus is saying here is, like, but if you choose not to marry, that's also a very valid option. But Armstrong just said in the previous page, no, that's not an option. And that how dare they put that below, uh, or how dare they put chastity but uh above the concept of marriage it's like because the bible does <laughs> so continuing on for what cause shall a man marry because god made the male and female because god created sex how's that working out that for you Bill? great yeah <laughs> those females yeah it's working i for would you. like to know why the male g-spot's in the butt but you know we've been asking that very I, I I ask it all the time. <laughs> I mean, then you have ways to have sex without making babies. And I think that's probably good. The poop hole loophole. That's what Paul talks about. Have, yeah, Paul basically says have sex as much as you want as long as you're not in the middle of fasting or something like that. Yeah. God forbid you pass out during all those excursions, huh? Get some <laughs> sustenance in your belly. <laughs> yeah, you definitely need some sustenance. <laughs> Why is me that, that fire? <laughs> <laughs> fire's burning. 
Okay. It's funny too. It's like that poll was so against like sexual conduct. Like everyone brings up Romans one when they throw it at gay people, for example. And, and it's like, wait a second, though. Let's let's actually just think here for a second. Paul said, if you're married, then have he basically said have sex as much as you want, and, and like as as long as both sides agree to it. So I've I've just started the EMDR therapy, and now I'm off of it for the next two weeks uh, because of various uh, scheduling issues, but. I was asked recently to come up with as many traumatic memories as I could handle. And, and so a lot of uh, other stuff I remembered too, that, that was crazy to me. It's like, and, and it just keeps coming. Like every day I remember something else. Yeah. So I, I, it's funny. It's like my story. I didn't even, so you know how people talk about like having amnesia of things. It's like, I didn't even realize that that was happening in my case. So now I can look at it and I'm like, oh, I actually did have some t like amnesia of these things. Um, and, and it was, it, it's just very interesting. So I do find that it's like once you start dredging up old memories or something, like things are just a little more ready to come out. Right. Right. And I, and I it, think we can have like, well, this is where I go off the rails a little bit, but I do think we can like, interface with our own mind a little bit and be like, okay, I'm interested in pulling up things right. about this. You know? That's why I did DBT for six months to prepare me for EMDR. Because wow. what DBT is about is to be mindful of your current emotions and thoughts. And so mm -hmm. that so that way, when you're approaching like traumatic memories, then you're actually able to evaluate them more as passing thoughts than reliving them. Right. So yep. yes. <clears throat> Right. Yeah. You're not really equipped to handle the feelings that come with it if you're right. In uh, so far, really I've been hard. doing pretty well. So far, I've been doing pretty well. I'm just shocked as as to how many are coming out. So, yeah. yeah. And they'll keep coming yeah. maybe for the rest of our lives. But at probably least, you know, we're addressing mm -hmm. them now. Um, our interview with uh, David from Pasadena, California, when he was talking about the Worldwide Church of God actually made wooden paddles. There was this carpenter that made wooden paddles to spank your children, to physically abuse them. Like there was a special one for it. And I just, I, I couldn't handle talking about it. I, I just don't think I'm ready for that yet. You know? God approved paddle? Yes, a God approved paddle. Isn't that disgusting? One of those and moments where we recognize that the church taught our parents to love us by abusing us yes and yeah he talked about how some parents would just like hang it up on the wall so it's like always that constant reminder i'm like well you got to mm -hmm. obey and so that taught me not to ask questions that taught me to not move forward just you know be my tiny little self insignificant self in the world because i didn't matter just just do what you're told it's horrible it, it, it's horrible and how manipulative i mean well said but how unfortunate because like I mentioned this before, um, I am a product of spanking, but I honestly have to say not one time was um, what would I personally consider it to have gone over the abuse line. Uh, I, I know what you're saying in terms of like any form of corporal punishment right. is is abusive. I, I understand that. And I would have to say today I agree. But in the moment back then, I honestly... Uh, based on like how my parents, like how their perceptions were and stuff like that, not once could I ever say that they abused me. Like not, not once. Um, it, it's like they, they were doing what they thought they had. To, it's like, I, I don't blame them for any of that. Uh, and it's funny because it sounds as if you guys were more on the abusive side of things. So. Well, I think that anytime you use force, physical force on a person mm -hmm. I agree. Um, who ostensibly has less power than you, it's. I agree. Abusive. I yeah. agree. Yeah. So uh, if you were to look back at that time, today standards, looking back, yeah, we would probably say that. But like in the moment it, that they, it, it was very much restricted, it was only in certain instances and it was not common. So it was so it was just something like when things got to a certain point that that it did happen in my case. So For us, no. it was <laughs> common. And I couldn't tell you one instance of where I knowingly did something wrong because I feared our parents oh, so much. Yeah, well, different experience for you, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, totally different. In our cases, two young women. I mean, we were we were girls at the time. Um, so if we're taught to o obey, and when we don't obey, we're physically punished for it by our parents, by this authority figure, right? We go out into the dating world. What happens? 
a man who also tries to pull authority over us, who beats us. And we just think that is the normal way of dealing with things. Instead of having healthy conversations, you just beat them into submission. Not okay. It's learning the power right. dynamic. And that to me is the biggest right. problem. And it doesn't matter like how painful it was. I I've had people tell me before, like spanking's not abuse. Okay. Then when, where's the fucking fine line then it's physical abuse as punishment for something when children are just trying to navigate the world and figure out their fucking surroundings. Mm. I take issue with punishment as a, as a whole, honestly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I, I would even uh, justice system, like I would opt for a full rehabilitation and get rid of punishment, anything resembling fucking right. punishment that when, doesn't help us. When you Have and I first started talking, when you and I first started talking, Patty, that's what I really liked about you because I had spent a lot of time uh, like talking to people in Supermax prison. And and just like mourning the fact that they have no contact with anybody. Yeah. And <laughs> it, it's it, it. And so it's just like, no, I, I, I completely side with you on that. Um, and yeah, it, it, and it's great. And we throw them away and forget about them. And they are society's forgotten. It's like, yeah, they did some shitty things. They did really shitty things. I because shitty, shitty things are done to them. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> and when they serve their when they serve their punishment, Joel, it's not like it goes away, especially no. in this society. No, like, no, no, in America, for the rest of your life, it is not yeah. like you go serve your time and then you have a clean slate. No, you're punished the rest of your life. I think in Florida, if you are imprisoned, um, you will never have voting rights again, and and I think that's ridiculous. So yeah, it is ridiculous. I think in Florida, and I might be wrong, but it's definitely in some states. I think we have to look at a lot of how the justice system operates as the um, expanded and diffuse uh, reaches of the energy that was once slavery. Yeah. Sorry. Absolutely. I completely 100% agree. Yep. Because yep. we use them for slave labor. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I have a friend in St. Louis who's a lawyer. Her entire job is to find people who have been wrongly imprisoned, people who have been thrown into prison from, you know, corrupt organizations, from cops that have pinned things on them. That's her whole job. And there's a lot of them. People don't I know. know that many. Yep. I'm surprised I there's know any, about that. I'm surprised there's any funding out there from anywhere to pay someone to actually give a shit and do that for people. There are. Um, I have come across them. Well, I don't know how we got to prison from from sex and babies, but we can go back. Punishment. Punishment. Huh? Oh, the yeah, expectation okay. of punishment. Yeah, go. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I'm good though. Make me mad. All right, that was well, a nice rabbit trail. It was. All right, add that to our list. Like we need to talk about punishment. Yeah. Fuck. All right. Make sure I'm drunk first. <laughs> oh, that's right. Because oh. that all started with Nancy realizing she's not ready for the spanking talk. Nope. 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 Okay. Okay. That's so you know about yourself, yeah, honey. whatever, whatever prepared, I will, I will not pu push. So because God created sex, he ordained the marriage institution and it is God who binds together as husband and wife, a man and a woman. Got marriage it, Joel. Then? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you learning something here, Joel? <laughs> I hope you oh. amend your decisions in life. Hmm. Oh yeah. Like I was told on Sunday. Yep. Yeah, I heard about that. Joel, um, when I was listening to that Marco Polo you sent about people being homophobic to you yet again in your church, Suman literally said- It wasn't me, my church. Like, it wasn't my church. It wasn't okay. my church. It was a totally different study. Go ahead. Well, mm -hmm. whoever it was, Suman was like next to you, like, how long are you going to put yourself through this? <laughs> he said yeah, that. Right. <laughs> an organization yeah, yeah. that's just based on homophobia in so many ways. I'm sorry. It's it funny. Cause it's like, I also have, um, uh, yeah, cause I also put a video on TikTok too, that basically said I should not be Christian because of all, all of that stuff. It's like, right. there's no good reason for me to be, but here I am. And it's like, and the, my point of the video was, I don't care what Christians themselves say to me in, in that regard, unless it is an actual true correction that my ears are open for that. But what, in terms of, um, uh, but in terms of like this, this mantra, it's like not, I am not a Christian because of anything they say. And so, yeah, that's the, I'm a, I'm a Christian because I'm personally convicted and basically just, it doesn't matter 
what what criticism it, it hurts it always hurts every time it happens but i noticed that i rebound a lot faster so it's like it's almost like the wounds are healing a lot faster marriage then is a second named purpose of sex marriage is a physical union but a divine institution almighty god ordained it it did not evolve it is not of man's devising okay notice in the scripture quoted above, Jesus said to the Pharisees, have ye not read? He quoted an already written passage of scripture. He said the Pharisees should have read it. Where is that scripture found? It's found in the second chapter of Genesis. It is part of the brief summary record of the Eternals original instruction to the newly created Adam and Eve. The creation of Eve had just been described and God then said, Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife. So the Almighty <clears throat> revealed the sec sacred. So the Almighty revealed the sacred marriage institution to the first man and woman. God, I can't get off this fucking page. Here we go. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> oh, no, just kidding. I just turned the page. I, I hope you don't get off of this fucking page. Uh. <laughs> uh, okay why marriage let's find out why marriage now stop and think for a moment why did god ordain the human relationship of marriage the old repressive dualistic morality taught that the only purpose of sex was reproduction but if merely reproducing their kind was the only purpose of sex no marriage would be necessary god made animals male and female Animals reproduce, but they do not marry. Marriage is not necessary to procreate. Didn't he say this exact fucking sentence before in the book? Yes. Uh -huh. Am I wrong? It was exact same sentence. It turns out we've figured out that marriage isn't necessary to procreate already, though. Like, Correct. that was a thing he was kind of upset about, I thought. It's not rocket Whatever. science. It's not rocket science. Realize this. Understand this truth. We can, through sex, have reproduction without marriage. Indeed, that is one of the world's greatest evils today. That's there the greatest? In, yeah, there is entirely too much reproduction without marriage. Animals reproduce, but animals do not marry. He just said that. They need little or no teaching. Ever seen a little calf born? Yep. The mother cow does not need to call an obstetrical physician or go to a hospital for the delivery of her calf. <laughs> Neither did human women until the last hundred years or so. Dumbass. Yeah, and and they still need <laughs> assistance. They still need assistance. It's like because it can go yeah, yeah, yeah. really wrong. It, so they have to make sure someone's there to make sure everything's okay. <laughs> well, right. <laughs> It's not like all animals do it just fine. Like a lot of them die doing that. That's how that goes. As soon as it is born, the calf will begin to stagger to its feet while the cow just stupidly stands waiting. <laughs> really? <laughs> Dumb cow. She does not need to teach her calf how to walk, how to take its food, how to do anything. A little wobbly and unsteady at first, the calf is up and walking in just a minute or two. I beg to differ. We are among one of the few mammals that doesn't have to lick its baby's asshole to get it to stimulate its very first poop. So I'm just going to say, like, <laughs> the the animal mother is very involved in getting those early things up and running in their baby. They don't just stand there stupidly on the side, you fucking dumbass. Ugh. He's just trying to... Not to mention, it's a painful process. Yeah. Not to mention that the cow was probably really exhausted by this point. Um, and one other point to like where people do get involved with the, the birds um, is uh, very often people have to pull the calf out. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. we've domesticated them so far that they're like, you know, also pr right. probably not operating as efficiently as as animals in the wild, wild would. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, I'm not exactly sure. And another refutation of the mother, animal mothers just kind of standing there dumbly. That is so not true. I've watched an elephant mother give birth and there was something wrong where the baby wasn't breathing and she was on it. Like she, kicking it. Yep. she was like one. kicking it and like pulling on its trunk. Like she was like, come on, baby, you're not going to die. And she saved it. Right. Yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. Animals are amazing. I love them. It, it, it's yeah. really cool to watch how they interact. Now, how long does it take a human infant to learn to walk? 
usually a year and often more, but the newborn calf walks almost immediately. No one teaches it. The calf has instinct. No, the human baby is comes out that way because we have such a big fucking brain. It's all the things that evolution put in place or that like worked out the best through evolution for a human baby to survive that's why it's different a cow whatever creature they evolved from out in the wild they survive better if they get up on their feet and they can fucking run and where does it start walking it has no instruction from anyone it starts walking for its first dinner it knows where to go and the mother cow just stands stupidly still while her calf sucks its milk Stand, nope. stupid. Stand stupidly? What a fucking asshole. This really? is what I'm saying. Yeah, he's trying and to like he's about pump to up go into the absent animal. father. Yep, and he is about to go into the absent father. Did yep. you know that um when a human baby is born, the baby is brought up onto the mother's chest, mm -hmm. the baby will crawl its way to the nipple. Like slowly, very slowly, Whoa. but a baby like the even that tiny, we'll find. you know, will yep. get a few inches and be able to get to this nipple door. and get to that that one and get, and get its first meal of colostrum. It's uh, I I know that we have the instinct to find the nipple. I didn't know that it was like instantaneous like that though. Okay, I'm gonna finish this section and then it's it'll be Joel when we get to man's destiny. So that's kind of perfect. Huh? Okay, and then I love this next sentence. Okay. Oh, here we go. We're talking about the cows, right? The baby cow and how the uh -huh. baby has just found the, uh -huh. the the udders and the mother is standing there <laughs> stupidly, right? So here we go in that context. And Fuck where real. is daddy? Where's daddy? daddy? Where is daddy? <laughs> the bull. That's hard to say. Perhaps miles away. He probably is nowhere around and is and soon the calf will not even need the milk from its mother and will be on its own. There is no marriage, no family life, no home life. God, those poor fucking cows. <laughs> but with humans, That's all ridiculous. this is different. <laughs> it's yeah. ridiculous. But with humans, all this is different. The purely reproductive process is the same in all mammals. But beyond this, all is different. The only purpose for sex in animals is reproduction, but humans are different. In humans, reproduction is not the only purpose of sex. A second purpose is marriage, and there is yet a third purpose. Blah, 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 blah. The newborn human does not get up and walk immediately forward to its food. The tiny baby is absolutely helpless. It has a few instinctive reflexes, but no instinct in the strict sense of the word. All yep. right, dude, how about you just twist that uh, one all up? It has mind, but at birth, there is no knowledge as yet in its mind. It knows virtually nothing at birth. It must be taught. It needs parents to teach it. It matures so very much more slowly than animals. Yet its potentiality is infinitely higher. And for this higher purpose, parental guidance and family life are necessary. Jesus, this is stupid. For God has said, let us make man in our image. God made cattle after their kind, after the cattle kind. He made every winged fowl after his kind, after the winged fowl kind. But he made man after the God kind. Profound, Mr. Armstrong. Mm. Well, that was a fucking shit show. That was a shit show. Incredible as it may sound to those who do not understand the revelation of God's truth and only an infinitis uh, oh, I always mess up that word, uh, infinitesimal. Uh, yeah, yeah, minority does. God is a family. This we have explained in chapter four. Um, and in man, God is producing his kind. Man has the supreme potentiality of being actually born into the very divine God family. Same stuff all over and over again. Mm -hmm. uh, do you realize what that means? Of course, God is composed of immortal spirit, while man, like animals, is composed in this life of material flesh, matter. But the transcendent essential factor is that God is perfect spiritual character. 
uh, is that God is his perfect spiritual character. It is the supreme intelligence combined with holy and righteous character of mind that most importantly distinguishes God from every other living creature. No animal has this potential, but it is the true destiny of man. Of course, God, too, possesses supreme almighty power, but without the right character, this power would be destructive and dangerous. What is this righteous spiritual character? It is that controlled ability in a separate independent entity to come to a right knowledge of the true from the false, the right from the wrong, and by free choice to choose the right and the true, and further to use the self-discipline to will and to actually do the right. And how define right? By the spiritual, uh, that, how do you, it should say, how do you define right? By the spiritual law of God. This necessitates that each individual human be an independent entity with a mind of his own, with freedom of choice, free moral agency, and it requires mind power, intelligence, intellect, ability to absorb knowledge, to reason, to think, to plan, devise, to draw conclusions, to will, and to act. Inanimate objects have no mind, make no decisions, have no character. Animals have instinct installed in brains, but animals do not possess human-level consciousness of self, do not absorb knowledge from which they reason, make choice, and will to act, even to enforcing self-discipline. I don't think that's true. I think we I think have quite a lot of evidence now to show that animals do possess consciousness of self mm -hmm. i believe they have consciousness of self. We've, we've talked about this before i do believe that humans have like just an, an extra notch to them because of like uh, our, our societies and stuff like that but i i completely agree because you look at ants for example there is some sort of consciousness e even in them like you can tell there is um well, sure. and, and they they even have fights and stuff like that and it's like how can an ant even know when to fight it, it's it's really interesting um, but and and do do ants have brains? I know they have a neurosystem, but uh, I know some insects don't really have a brain. We're crying out loud, ants! So how much more would an elephant? And oh, yeah, elephants are like they have a very rich compassionate social life. Yeah, the, right. like emotional stuff. Yeah, They're very smart, very smart animals. Yeah. Dolphins, yeah. that's another one too. Dolphins, certain types of seals. Um, no, I, I do recognize that animals have consciousness, but I well, do believe that human consciousness is just an extra layer. This just seems like the right moment for this crow story. So my best friend has a little, little murder of crows in her backyard and she mm -hmm. videotapes them, right? She puts out stuff and videotapes them. So she's noticed something. She puts yeah. out peanuts in the shell for the crows and there's a dish of water there. It seems that the crows seem to have some trouble getting the shells open. And so what they've started doing is they'll take the peanuts and stick it in the water, leave it in there for a few minutes, and then it softens it enough that they're able to pry it open. And I mean, I've seen, you know, scientific videos of, of crows that wanted something that's in the bottom of a bottle. There's a wire sitting there. They fucking figured out how to bend the end stick the wire down in and hook the thing they wanted like i'm sorry like sure you could say we're a higher tier or whatever the fuck but like hi that's impressive we, yeah. we are missing it if we think they're dumb animals like no what? they're not dumb <laughs> no i i think in terms of certain i mean dogs will do some things that are pretty pretty funny and and pretty uh like nonsensical we dumb though we have bred that's the those point exactly out. i agree yeah. yeah they're infanticized yeah they're absolutely infanticized and and so the um yeah no i i agree but no it is true i do believe that animals have sometimes better common sense than we do and so <laughs> yeah. that was gonna be my next point joel have we seen some of the people walking around here and we actually think there's an like an abundance of intelligent life <laughs> well, I got one. I got one. What animal makes cults, like personality cults and stuff like that? What animal tells people to sell everything that they? Oh, or what animal tells other animals sell everything that you? It's like Animal Farm, right? Like sell everything that you have for for me because I am the supreme. Uh, yeah, you have colonies like bees that have a queen. 
Um, but it's not the same. It's not the same type of mentality. So yeah, that's something unique to humans. Well, there are animals that gatekeep normal behavior though. Like I think it's meerkats. It's a matriarchal society. And if the young, any of the younger female meerkats are caught, you know, doing the nasty with any of them off, yeah. off campus, um, they'll get they'll get kicked out because there's yep. like one matriarchal meerkat lady that apparently is the only one allowed to get a little meerkat D. So and that's <laughs> very true. Uh, the, and the extension to the human way would be this concept of tithing, the concept of following uh, certain rules and practices, even though the rest of the animal kingdom doesn't do these practices, <laughs> we institute these practices. Yeah. Yeah, I, and Nancy's dying here as I ramble. So there we go. <laughs> I, I just am not thinking that any of that makes us like better, you know? No, but it does. It does. There is an extra layer to, I, I think, to our <laughs> conception of the world. Um, so uh, yeah, I would. Yeah, it, like an extra layer. It's like yeah, animals might have those social <laughs> cues, and we'll toss out members. <laughs> But it's not like all meerkat. Th there's this one group of meerkats that's going to behave so radically differently from the rest of them, and it forms like this type of cult, and that oh. they look down on other meerkats for not. For, for, now there are some examples of like with apes where they will go to other societies, like, and there are differences in those societies, but it's not like a cult in that in that way and that's just an example of the cult you also don't have like <laughs> i'm sorry I think, broke, Nancy. I think we broke her <laughs> She's gone, and i'm talking and i think this will be funny on the video like, i just i'm just like I'm just, <laughs> i just keep on rolling what was that the meerkat females can actually get back into the group if they groom the head female groom her yeah like grooming her fur oh so, so they can they're saying they sorry. have to suck up to her <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So the 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 promiscuous young meerkat girl can get back in if she sucks up to the to the. Queen. And yes. that's that is something humans do. Yep. Yep. So oh. that was that was my twelve year old who I love it. knew more love about it. than me. She so. knows animals. <laughs> Yeah. I love it. No, and but the, but yeah, true. Yeah, and that's something humans do. Like if you if if you suck up to someone after you do some sort of uh, like uh, like infraction, yeah, that's usually the case. Yep, we still do that. We are fucking animals, people. We are. We are. We uh, yeah. Yep. Suck on that, Herbie. We are animals. Uh. <laughs> you dumb old crotchety asshole. Oh. All right. Oh boy. Uh, so I'm going back to where I stopped. Uh, an okay. Animals do not comprehend as as Nancy is still dying. Animals. Okay. <laughs> All we got to do is mention meerkat penises, and we can like <laughs> Nancy. Hey, it was a meerkat penises. It was meerkat penises? penises. Okay. I would be <laughs> so scared to be a female cat I'll, I'll tell you that like because of the barbs on the male penises animals do not acquire scientific knowledge they do not create question or decide whether to obey moral codes yeah they do yeah they do you can see dogs compl uh, contemplating doing something um <laughs> so yeah and so if they contemplate then they can imagine and so they have different, they can imagine like forks in the road and what direction to go. So that's at least some form of imagination. So Absolutely. animals are not made in the image of God, but do possess mind power to comprehend the right ways of God's spiritual law. They develop no character. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Humans are born with minds. Humans must be taught or learn. But the same thing with animals, uh, but the human mind can absorb knowledge and reason from it. So can animals think creatively. So can animals formulate plans. So can animals make decisions. So can animals render judgments. So can animals and exercise self-discipline. So can animals. Man has the potentiality of developing righteous character. So can animals. Human babies are born helpless. True enough, they need the tender care, the loving instruction, the patient training and discipline, and the warm affection and love of a father and a mother. They need the warmth and protection and security of family and of home life. Don't animals 
So, and they are of supreme importance for they are the potential heirs of God. This righteous character is not created instantaneously. It develops through experience and experience requires time. Instinct in animals is automatic, set in the animal brain from birth, but divine righteousness character, a uh, divine righteous character must be developed over a span of years. Animals do learn things. Um, all this is one reason for marriage in the family relationship. But there are more. There are other reasons for marriage, for family, and for home. Why should humans marry? Well, the educators today do not really know. The scientists do not fully comprehend. They suppose that somewhere along the evolutionary trail, perhaps millions of years ago, man himself started uh, it merely as a custom. They do not know when the marriage institution started, by whom, or for what purpose. Of the tremendous meaning of this institution, they are ignorant. The communist USSR even experimented for a time on abolishing marriage and producing humans outside marriage. Okay, um, what the really? Fuck? I think they did. Animals sometimes are monogamous, like penguins. Yeah. And and so and many yeah, humans like, are not. <laughs> I mean, like, come on. It's like it just depends. I honestly think this is like a whole it depends type of con conversation. Not to mention, though, Herbie, that that um, the biblical concept of marriage was sex. So if you yes. had, so when you had sex with someone for the very first time, the biblical concept is you are now married to that person. But then you have characters that had a lot of wives and a lot of concubines, like Solomon with his 700 wives yeah, and 300 concubines. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. Me too. I have, I, have, I have window shopped. Angels are sexless. The real truth about sex and marriage in humans goes deeper still. Its overwhelming significance and meaning seems to have become lost by man. We've seen that animals have sex, that animals reproduce, but marriage is not required for reproduction and animals do not marry. They do not establish home life in the family relationship. That is dead wrong. I'm sorry. Like there are I'm not every animal say this. Not not every animal, but a large portion of them do. Where do we get herds from? Where do we get like the the con yeah, it, it's um anyway. It's like a whole category of fun to have uh, separate names for groups of animals, right? Like earlier we mentioned crows and uh, murder. It's, it's a murder of crows, right? We yep. have like a gaggle of geese. Like it's a fun thing for us to name these groupings of animals that live together in community. Like yep. uh, big families. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I yeah. can I jump in though about the um the marriage institution? And maybe sure. we've said this in previous episodes, but I'm sorry, the marriage institution is about maintaining control over the bloodlines. It's a patriarchal situation entirely. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, we've morphed it a little bit into being this legal thing so that the property and stuff has a pathway to follow. But like, this is not about building a family or a community. It's a legal, protective, like guard your shit kind of thing. Contract. That's it's a contract. That's what marriage is. Good. Not to mention, life. I I had a conversation with someone on Sunday. So um, I am around arranged marriages from time to time, and the uh, and the concept has always been contractual. The concept of marrying for love. It has it has ebbed and flowed throughout history, and right. and so for us to like really espouse that it's only about love is like I mean, looking historically, that's not the case. And then you have um, even in the Bible, marriage was used as a contract, a contract. And the and I just was talking to someone on Sunday that was talking about potentially marrying someone just so that way they like someone internationally, like that they are wanting to leave the U.S. and they are honestly thinking about using their um, U.S. citizenship as a way to get to another country, so that way they can uh, marry someone, offer them a green card, and then be able to live in the other country. People um, do it all the time. All the so, time. I've been asked three times i've been asked many times in chinese culture i am proposed a lot and, cool, yeah. and and i just yeah actually i considered it when i was in china when i was being deported i did consider marrying at the last second um but i ended up not going through it yep i was asked by um two asian dudes actually one i worked with he had a whole family but he wanted a white child or a partially white child 
And another one, it was before we deployed. I was um, deployed with him to Iraq. And then he, he's from like China. And he asked if uh, we could get married. He said we didn't have to have sex or anything, but we'd make a lot more money if we were deployed together and then we could get divorced afterwards. But no. That, that uh, but the thing is, though, it's like, yeah, a lot of marriages are done without sex on the table. Yep. Because like, the oh, person that I was considering marrying in China is a lesbian. <laughs> and 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 she knew that I was gay. And it would be like, yeah, it would actually have been the perfect fit because we would have left each other alone and uh, she could have still like done whatever and I would have still done whatever, but contractually speaking, we're together. And arranged marriage is still very much a thing. I mean, the majority of my friends these days are, are Hindu or they come from families that are Hindu in India. It's perfectly acceptable to ask somebody, are you in a love marriage or an arranged marriage? Because arranged marriage is just, that's what they do over there. Mm -hmm. If yep. you're it's in love with someone, hey, it's, it, it's a bonus. Yeah, that's a that's the thing. It's like, it is viewed as a bonus and all the better if that's true. Yep, right. exactly, right. But it's predominantly contractual. Now consider angels. The skeptic doesn't believe it, but the Bible reveals that angels do exist. Angels are on a higher level than men. It is written that man was made a little lower than the angels. Actually, it says something different. That is, during this mortal, fleshly human life now, you want to know what it actually says? It doesn't say angels. It literally says that humans were made a little lower than the gods. So, but Ooh. it's translated as angels. But the of word course. is Elohim, and, and it's mm. it's uh, and and it's it's really funny though because it's like mainstream Christianity does not accept that there are other gods, but the Old Testament does not dispute it. Like there's two sections, I think, and but the but like two sections out of the whole Old Testament that potentially say that other gods don't exist. And it's like, yeah, no, it's actually what happened was we whitewashed it. Like as a Western society, we got rid of the translations of these terms. The word is gods. Lot. To the angels? Oh, oh, there oh yeah. Things? Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah, there were two angels there and he offered his daughters instead of the angels because- but I and, he yeah. didn't have sex, Joel. No, he wasn't offering the angels for sex. He was offering his daughters in their stead, but- I do believe that when angels were on Wait. earth, that they looked just like humans and what that they, you know, whoever showed up, dudes, two angels, I two know, angels. but they wanted to fuck these dudes, like these holy men. And he's like, no, take my virgin daughters instead. Yeah. Uh, he's <sighs> saying, go fuck them. Am I wrong? He is. And let me tell you something. I have heard churches try to explain that section away and actually like going into like the, and this is, this is my, I'm going to be on a soapbox for like a minute or two, like, but this one, uh, this is something like I am so against is looking at Genesis as a model of how to behave. Um, the concept is that Lot was already losing his way, that the, that it, there was something going on there's a story about like when abraham uh, god told abraham to leave don't bring any family members with you and in the very next verse he brings lot with him and it starts like this whole chain of negative events so because abraham didn't listen completely and so when you have like lot it is not supposed to be seen as a good thing that he gave his daughters to these people that, that is not supposed to be the way because right after this whole story his daughters have sex with him like that is like crazy it's like so when you look at the when you look at the story it's clearly a negative depiction but yeah it is i'm trying to bring up the point this said okay apparently the bible says angels don't have sex they have no sex organs and yet they all talks about but that he's holy dudes instead right. they want to fuck the virgin daughters which mm -hmm. lot well on a silver platter do angels eat and poop because yeah. they only need a bunch to be fucked because they were given food angels eat in the but and i'm sure they don't have to eat but that it's possible and I feel Paul, like i'm watching the movie dogma I saw <laughs> <the movie> dogma. <laughs> with alan rick 
where they're all smooth like a Ken doll. I, mean, I know I mentioned that before, but like, but right, that like whole scene. she's making a. I think she's making a point. The idea that like here Herbie's saying angels are sexless, and yet we know examples of times when people were like, "Ooh, there's an angel. Let me get all up on them." So right. Like, mm-hmm. I, so I believe that what it is is that they don't have to be, but that they can. Um, and that Paul says what? that angels are not given oh, away in marriage. I'm sorry. Wow. No, but that Paul said that, that they are given away. That should be a section. We should make oh. a little song. Apologetics. Can we talk about Lurkat D again? <laughs> Can we talk about what again? Can we talk about what again? Nancy's still obsessed with the meerkat penises. So each angel was individually and separately created, not born. Among angels, there is no marriage, no home life, no family life. And no sex. And what is the function of angels? Angels are spirit beings composed, not of material flesh. I'm sorry, they appeared very material, uh, but of spirit immortal. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angel spirits. God is immortal and composed of spirit. Then are angels on the same level with God? Not at all. They are mere spirit creations of God, created to be his servants, true, messengers, yep, representatives, yep, in the administration of God's universe ruling government. Yep, that is true, that very ending there. Uh, True in terms of Christian theology. Okay. Herbie always had too much of a hard-on for government, if you ask me, but... This is Suman's new shower cap. <laughs> it's unicorns. It's the Scottish national animal. So really? that would be that would be nice with my kilt. Yep. Do you remember, Nancy? Our parents had this record that was like some band, like an Irish band or Scottish. Uh, Scott, maybe it was Scottish. It was like a whole thing of explaining why there are no unicorns. It was a joke of like how the unicorns were having too much fun and they wouldn't get on the ark what i don't remember me father he was orange and me mother she was green yeah ah, now, now you remember, remember. It. <laughs> <laughs> jingles the jingles oh my gosh patty i have forgotten about that song but you know what speaking of unicorns i remember those those books that were like unicorns and dragons that we used to read oh, yeah. as kids you remember that why yeah, were last, we able to unicorn. read stuff like that and yet our parents were all about not letting us watch things like the lion king because of the whole circle of life concept okay but there is unicorns mentioned in one part of the bible at least in one translation yes. and dragons too i think Yes. serpents serpents and dragons kind of get intermixed in historical stuff right um so anyway so maybe that's why if they, if they could make a case that both of those were actually mentioned i was like joel you're just too much man for us <laughs> <laughs> bring all the men <laughs> whatever i can burp better than you yeah you definitely can although i might be able to fart better than you sometimes wow I'm definitely the mom of this group. (laughs) Angels on a plane far lower than God. Should I say it all sexual? Oh, I would love it. Why is this so hierarchical anyway? Okay, I don't need to go farther with that, but shit. Do you really want to go down that train, Pets? No. I'm okay with it. Oh, okay. (laughs) Angels on a far... (laughs) Oh my god! see i can't do it holy shit there we go your own face joel that helps me thank you we'll make faces while you do it Mm -hmm. (laughs) angels on a plane far lower than god are higher than mortal man now but consider man's ultimate heritage if he chooses it Speaking of the relative difference between man and angels, in the first two chapters of the book of Hebrews, we read, For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come. The world tomorrow. He had a program in there. (laughs) Whereof we speak. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man? That thou art mindful of him. This is fucking boring. Understand this. The earth was once put in subjection 
two angels with the archangel Lucifer on that world throne as God's administrator to administer God's government over the angels. That then populated the earth. You know how that population happened. But Lots Lucifer became proud, filled with vanity, and decided to become an aggressor, attempted to dethrone God and place himself on the throne of the universe, the nerve of him. He was cast down to earth, back down to earth. His name changed to Satan, meaning adversary. The angels, which joined his mutiny, became demons. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta insert something here. Lucifer really? is not a name in the Bible. Satan and his demons will sway invisibly this world. But Jesus Christ conquered Satan and qualified for world rule. He is coming again to earth soon. Now as king of kings to set up and reestablish on earth God's government. Now what of man? Those truly converted before Christ returns shall rule the world tomorrow. Under Christ, awesome. Yes, but ultimately, even more than that. Notice now this passage in he blah, blah, blah. Notice now this passage in Hebrews 2. The statement is made that angels will not be ruling the world tomorrow. Okay, must but, what of man? Shameless plug. Every time he says the world tomorrow, I keep saying shameless plug. So. <laughs> True. Yes. Insignificant flesh and blood mortal man. Why should the great God consider him? He only created him, right? And here comes the stupendous answer few humans, blinded by Satan's deceptions have ever noticed stupendous i have never heard anyone use that term ever yeah. stupendous yeah. God, this is boring. thou make it him... what you can make it i got faith in you okay <laughs> thou i got this give me a... thou madest him a little lower than the angels thou crowdest him with the glory and honor and dis, dits, dick, 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 set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subject, subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. You won't quite grasp that at first. True. It is too overwhelming, but thank you, Herbie, for clearing things up for us. Mm, <laughs> making it so clear. To be crowned means to be given kingly rule. To no be shit, crowned Sherlock. with glory and honor is to be given such a rule as Christ has now. And that is described in chapter one of Hebrews as being the administrative ruling executive over the entire universe. Christ is now ruling over all things. The father of the God kingdom has placed the resurrected living Christ as chief executive over the government of God, over the entire vast limitless universe and converted humans are heirs of Christ, joint heirs with him to inherit with him in due time all that he has now inherited. But continue the passage in Hebrews 2. But now we see not yet all things put under him. Oh, then the rulership over the universe is not yet under man. Not while he is human, mortal. But what do we already now see? Continue the passage. My drink is empty. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, even as we now, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor. And verse 10 shows that Jesus Christ is the captain, the leader, the pioneer who goes on before of our salvation. Christ already is crowned with this honor and glory. Christ rose from the dead. He is alive and he is divine. He has been glorified in, in this glorified spirit condition. His eyes are like flames of fire and his face shines as bright as the very sun full strength. 
are you really comprehending this? Are you? Nope. nope. <laughs> and the mortal sun, man full strength. Hmm. I mean, that's what the Bible says. I mean, I mean, I see where he's going, but like eh, this is very inconsequential. Um, <clears throat> and mortal man, if he repents, surrenders unconditionally to God and God's government, accepts in living faith. Jesus Christ as personal savior can receive God's gift of his Holy Spirit, the very life, essence, nature, mind, and power of God begetting him now as God's own yet unborn son. If he grows spiritually, overcomes and endures, he shall at Christ's soon coming be changed or resurrected if he dies from mortal to immortal. And then if the very char character, so if, if is also capped, so if the very character of God has been developed within him, his vile material body will be instantaneously changed or converted into one like unto his, Christ's, glorious body. But your vile character will not then be instantaneously changed. That change must take place now in this life. So that is the supreme heritage of man, if he is willing. But what is the function of angels now? They are ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Man, now lower than angels, has a destiny far higher. What the fuck? I want to read the next one. Go. Because that was you just finishing up for Nancy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, were, I've tuned out to this Joel, shit. Go ahead. Joel, you were just finishing Nancy off there? I, I did. I did. I did a good job, too. I see. She looks very engaged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta catch up on the show Vikings. It's much more interesting than this shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, should I read this one? Uh, sexy all like too. A god plane relationship. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh God. Okay. So, grasp this colossal truth. If you can. Here's the greatest truth you can ever know. Man and man only of all life forms God has created can be born into the God family. The kingdom of God. <laughs> I can do this, Joel. <laughs> I can't look at you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Animals have never been given family relationship. Angels have never enjoyed family status. The family relationship. Okay, this is a problem. Is a God plane relationship, not an angel plane relationship. We're not talking about aviation here, right? We're talking about like tears. And God bestowed it on man. Because man is to be born into the God family. Of all life forms, whether plant, animal, or angel in God's creation, man alone was created for marriage, for home, and for family life. Read that again. Try to comprehend it. Think of the significance. This pivotal truth has been hidden from a deceived world. Man is now composed of matter, yet in man and in man only, in men, only in men, is so, God's creation still going on. Humans, by repentance, surrender to God and acceptance of Christ, <laughs> may be in mind and attitude converted, may receive within themselves God's Holy Spirit. I think Joel's having a religious experience over yes. there. Uh, thus, they are actually begotten as God's children. They may have direct communication with God and call him daddy. They are brought into a father and son relationship with God. Now, okay, uh, this is getting weird to read this uh, in a sexy voice. I'm sorry. Blech. Daddy. <clears throat> I actually didn't say daddy. I just said that. <laughs> this is possible for no other creature, not even angels. Angels were not, never can be, begotten and born of God. 
Each angel is a separate creation. No angel can ever become a part of the divine family or the kingdom of God. Notice of angels, God says, For unto which of the angels he said at any time, Thou art my son. This day I have begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Again, weird that I'm reading this in a sexy voice. Just ignore that. Neither animal, nor angel, nor any other being except a man can be literally begotten by spiritual reproductive process and then actually born into the divine God family. What a matchless, supreme, awe-inspiring, breathtaking potential. I'm awe-inspired. Oh, sexy voice, Joel. Oh, yeah. Do it. Mm, I'm getting prepared. Okay. The function of angels. Angels, higher than man is now, are the ministering servants of God in the administration of his universe ruling government. And in relation to man, angels are ministering spirits set forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Invisible angels actually minister to and serve the human children of God. Begotten humans are the actual heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. (laughs) Notice, and because ye converted Christians are sons, God hath sent forth forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Daddy. Daddy, wherefore thou art please. no more a servant, <laughs> wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ, and I don't have a problem with this imagery because of knowing about the daddy-son mentality of a lot of gay relationships. A young son of a wealthy man, while still a child, may be under the care of an adult servant. The servant is older, farther advanced in knowledge, on a higher status physically and mentally, but far lower potentially. For when the son is mature, he will inherit his father's wealth and power. Therefore, the servant, temporarily older and farther uh, farther matured, is servant, Mm, a sub ministering to the young heir that illustrates the fact of angels ministering to humans so it is Jesus bdsm <laughs> just, like, just like nancy thought <laughs> humans are if converted through christ the heirs of the god family they are to <clears throat> enter the divine family they are even now the begotten children of god Therefore, God ordained the family relationship for human beings. No other beings, whether angel or animal, have this relationship. But it goes further. The family relationship demands the mm, husband and wife relationship. And that demands marriage and faithfulness to that matrimonial bond. The church of God is merely that <clears throat> body composed of the begotten children of God. And the yaddy, church yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. Sorry. Uh, as a body is the, uh, is it affianced? Because it's based on the word uh, fiance, affianced, 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 okay. by bride of Christ. Oh, yeah. To marry Christ. Oh, yeah, at the time of the resurrection and his. At the time of the what? uh, At the time of his second coming. (laughs) 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 So there is also the divine marriage relationship. No, understand. The husband and wife relationship and the family relationship are God plain relationships i do not disagree these are not animal plane or angel plane relationships since humans were put on earth for the very 
purpose of being begotten and then born into the God family, which is the kingdom of God, the eternal has <clears throat> endowed this God plane relationship for humans and for humans only. What a wonderful what privilege to be statement? humans. What? What the fuck is that statement? I, uh, he's basically saying that humans are, uh, are the ones with the potential to become just like him. Yep. So? Yeah. What, what, uh, it's what a lot of word doing? vomit. It's a lot of word vomit, but I do have to say real quick before I finish this section. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So him talking about marriage being a divine relationship and that there are three purposes of marriage. And one of them was for sex and one of them was for reproduction uh, and one of them was for contract or something like that. I forget that there were two listed so far and it's like, yeah. So if we're in a marriage with God, then, uh, what does that mean? And so anyway, um, what a wow. wonderful privilege to be humans, to be given the marriage relationship now, but later to marry Christ and become part of the God family. Nope. I will not marry him. Mm-hmm. But I think there's something really poetic too about how human copulation is male and female together where the male penetrates the, the female. And it's a similar uh, idea with the sperm penetrating the egg. I think that yeah. that is interesting. Yeah. It's like everything's a fractal of itself or something. This is a, this is a very wholesome and, and very educational conversation. <laughs> I know. Joel, I feel honored to be the first woman in your bed, by the way, even though my husband was right next to me and it was him you wanted. <laughs> you were the second woman in my bed. Well, thanks, everybody, for being here for the seventh episode as we're working our way very slowly and painfully and sometimes laughably through the Missing Dimension Insects. It's been so good to be here with you, Nancy and Joel, my buddies. All right, everybody, don't forget to come back in two weeks for the next installment. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Ta -ta. Ta -ta. <laughs> I'm on a computer now and it doesn't do it. Go, there we go. Mm -hmm.